everyone, this is Jenny Wen here. I'm with Linda Chen. Today, we're gonna to talk about a topic that's gonna to be very applicable to the men and the women who love this. So it's about sex vitality, how to increase your sex life. Here are some of the reasons why you wanna, you know, you wanna listen from beginning to end of this. There's a lot of people struggling with um, the life in the bedroom, you know, or some people don't even have one, right? Um, so we have come up with tips that's gonna help you for those who are in a relationship and those who want to get into a relationship, some of the key things that's gonna help you. We have from a nutritional point of view or a medical point of view, and also from a mindset point of view. So this is gonna help you out. All right, All here's right. a great story from Glenda. There are factors that affect your sex life. Okay, so stress is one of them, but there's also other factors that affect your sex life. If you drink excessive alcohol, if you use nic nicotine, if you smoke marijuana, coffee, sugar, all affect your sex life. Pharmaceuticals affect your sex life, for goodness sake. So yeah. if you're on, you know, tranquilizers, beta blockers, birth control pills, hormone pills. So birth control pills, don't take birth control pills because it causes vaginal dryness and you're less likely to feel the desire to want to have sex. So no birth control pills. Okay. So I was never on birth control pills except for plan B. So I don't know about it. And who takes tranquilizer anyways, <laughs> but no birth control pills, no pharmaceuticals. It will decrease your sex life for sure. Based okay. on her true story. <laughs> I know it, it causes vaginal dryness and like you really don't have the desire to have sex. It's this true is though. That's the thing with elderly women, you know, as they get older, you know, the, the lubrication down there in the, you know, canal is not exactly as great. So therefore people use other strategy, right? Like lubes, um, you know, they stay hydrated, they keep their health in check, right? Some of yeah. the things that's really important, you know, because being close to your partner it's 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 like an intimacy it's bond you know it's not just sex in itself it's the connection that we want to build that relationship that one we want to have to last for like a lifetime right that's what we all want right don't we yeah yes yeah so okay like, so what other yeah. tips besides no birth control pills that okay so there's ways like there's lifestyle factors that we could change right stress management so manage your stress because stress directly links with and interferes with sex and, yeah. the, and the likelihood and your sex drive, right? Yeah, so for sure. There's underlining issues such as worrying, you know, you're worrying all the time. You have a job, you're worrying about a job, you're worrying about money. These are some things that you need to manage to manage stress. And, you know, of course, you know, between in a relationship, you have like a strong, when you have a strong relationship your overall health and your sexual function will be better. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I mean, with, with how things are in this economy, you know, it's a lot of stress on not only the women, but also the men, because they're known to be like the provider of the family, right? It's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of pressure on them um, to bring in the butter, bring in the bread and all that stuff, pretty much bring in the dough, right? It, it's challenging, right? So it's, it's um, going to stress how Blendo is talking about that. I can give you an example where, you know, say you're a guy, you um, have a long day of work or whatever it is, either you own a business or, you know, work for someone, a corporation, you know, after your eight, nine, 10, 12 hours, days of work, you come home and then, you know, the first thing you don't want to hear is your wife nagging you about how oh we need this we need that and you didn't do this you didn't do that and how everything sucks and blaming you you know like you're gonna be like man I had enough of stress at work now I don't need work stress at home <laughs> right so yeah. that itself can you know like bring a man's libido down because you know a home is where, you know, you want to feel relaxed more than not. And, you know, it doesn't make him feel good when, you know, like, let's say he feels like blamed for it. He feels crappy about himself and he's already stressed out. All that nagging, adding more attention to that. So therefore, okay, I'm just going to go to sleep. See you later. No sex tonight, baby. 
Yeah, so. there's like the emotional and the physical, like it's all attached, body, mind, spirit, right? It's all it is. attached. Yeah. So talking from a nutrition perspective, that's yeah. what we're going to go to now. Um, there's a strong correlation between nutrition and sex, right? Yeah. So when we nourish our bodies well, we have better um, sex because we're boosting our immune system, we feel stronger, increasing circulation um, when we move more, when we exercise more. But let's start with the food first, because I know we love food. And yeah, who doesn't, I love food. Who doesn't like food, right? So here yeah. are some delicious foods for better sex. Yeah. Okay. Thoughts. So, and you hear this all the time, oysters. Yeah. Right? Oysters have that natural um, aphrodisiac. Aphrodisiac, aphrodisiac yeah uh, properties in it anything high in zinc so if you don't like oysters there's clams there's lobster there's crab all this have high zinc content in it so you could definitely add those for the non-seafood lovers you know you can do beef pork beans pumpkin seeds these have a higher content of zinc but yeah. with um, animal products you just want to keep that in moderation because it is linked to high, higher risk for heart disease. If yeah, too much fat. Animal products, right? Um, so any of the products that I, any of the items that I named improve blood flow and improve hormone levels at the same time. See, okay. the key so that the, she's saying is the blood flow. So if blood you- Blood flow, yeah. It increases yeah. blood flow. So it brings all the blood flow to your sex organs. Therefore- you have more desire to have sex. So men and women, try this, okay? This also directly links with fertility too. Yeah. Um, you have high zinc foods, it links to um, better sperm production. So increasing your fertility rates, right? You're more likely to, you know, have better sperm when you have high zinc. I think yeah. that's right to say. I'm not wow, sure that's, that's the right way to say it, but sure. That's <laughs> okay, awesome. Moving on. Yeah, moving on to the next food group. Oh, hold we, on. Oh, since you're talking about circulation, mm. I don't know. Did we talk about Viagra? No, not yet. You go ahead. Okay. So like, you know, th the reason why Viagra is such a big thing in the market is because, you know, it helps promote the circulation. It causes vasodilation to the penis. So it's pretty much like it relaxes it, the blood's circulating, and therefore you get an erection. So like what Blenda was saying about um, the, you know, circulation, how circulation makes a big difference, right? It is true. So if you, let's say you have diabetes, coronary artery disease, atherosclerosis, hypertension, you know, just to name a few, you know, any heart problems that like that, anything that affects the pumps, the circulation, that's going to put you more at risk of it. So that's why it's so important. We want to focus on these health promotions. And Glenda's going to go back into some of the food that food groups. is going to help. Okay, this isn't a food group, but yeah. I think everybody should add more of this. It's okay. water. Water improves circulation. Yeah. Helps with all your body processes, right? I think your body's made out of, I think, 70% water. Oh, I yeah, don't know for kids. Yeah, for kids is higher, right? For adults, it's like sixty. It's like different textbooks say different some different yeah, things, and yeah. you know, like so it's like around sixty to seventy, and for kids, it's like even more. So yes. if they lose water weight, that affects them more. Yeah. So I would say increase your water intake. You know, mm -hmm. anywhere between two to three liters a day, depending on your activity level. I always say that. Yeah. And then that way you're improving your circulation. Let's move on to food. There's another food item that I really love, and I know we both love this, and it's salmon. Oh, salmon, yes. fatty fish, such as sardines, tuna, halibut, it all improves your sex life, believe it or not. So you know how fatty fish is known for its omega-3 fatty acids? Yeah. So because it contains omega-3, it promotes blood flow, actually, and prevents the buildup of plaque. Yeah. Therefore, it increased circulation to the sex organs once again. Yeah. These are, this is an easy food item to add, salmon. And we love yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's true. The omega-3 really helps with the, um, pretty much like uh, in terms of 
promoting the high density lipids and uh, you know decreasing the low density low, lipids yeah. like that right so like it gives you a good ratio of lipids that you need for a better um coronary arteries uh, function yeah exactly yeah. and there's other foods as well there's so many foods out there so there's nuts and seeds yeah they're high in zinc right cashews almonds walnuts pumpkin seeds especially pectins uh pe pectin seeds, which is pumpkin seeds, sorry, yeah. pecans, um, hazelnuts, peanuts, all increase sexual function. My Lots goodness. These are amazing. These are foods amazing to tips. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> and there's more. Okay. Believe it or not, there is another food group that we totally miss. These are high antioxidant rich foods. Okay. I definitely want to know about this. <laughs> all right. So celery, spinach, arugula, yeah. Apples, radish, blueberries, strawberries, all berries, actually. Yeah. Grapes, cherries, citrus fruits. And my favorite all time is apples. Yeah. Um, apples increase blood flow. They're delicious and they're really easy to add and kids love it. So, I mean, not to talk about like kids and yeah, but <laughs> kids love apples and it's easy to add to your diet. Well, the reason why she had kids is because her and her husband did something to create those oh, kids. So okay. therefore, yeah. So we we <laughs> suffered through fertility for many years. People that don't know me well, um, we've gone through, I'm an IVF mom of two. So we did IVF twice. And I think um, having gone through fertility for so many years, it was just just something really difficult to go through and talk about even, but you know, the more awareness that's out there, the better. Yeah. Um, and the reason why I like to talk about fertility is because I really link it back to like holistic nutrition and fitness, because these lifestyle factors really helped me build my family and yeah. through, you know, better eating habits, adding more of these items that I listed in my, in, in this video has increase my chances of conceiving and it did it gave me a family yeah so that's why you know these food groups that I'm at giving you and these items that I'm telling you is because I really truly believe that eating a whole foods diet can change not just fertility but your whole vitality it's yeah. not just for one I not just for fertility it could improve diabetes uh, heart problems anything basically don't forget the moods too. The salmon has got the EPA um, three, right? Yeah. So that you know that that helps. I mean EPA three, the omega three, omega -3. right? Fatty acid. So that helps, right? A lot of these components are part of the cascade of where they promote hormones, where like you know improving serotonin, improving dopamine. You know yeah. some of the things that helps improve our mood as well too, like vitamin D. All these along the cascade where it helps improve our moods in one way I or know. another. I know, and then you know, when we talk about like normal sexual function, you know, if we have healthy organs, yeah, we have healthy sex life. Yeah. So you want healthy hormones too, right? So it's not just like, it's healthy organs, healthy hormones, yep. all in balance, all in check. So these are some things that you need to look at when you're talking to your family physician or your fertility doctor, if you are seeking fertility help. Um, you know, definitely get your blood work checked. These are things that I always recommend get getting things checked out, talk to yeah. your doctor, getting those yearly checkups. They're so important. So normal hormones equals, yeah. you know, um, normal desire for sex because your hormone levels are normal. When you yeah. have low testosterone levels, um, you desire, your desire decreases and your sperm production actually decreases as well. And yeah, this women, is more in the male. Yeah. And then in the women, guys. it's like low yeah. estrogen, um, equals, uh, slowers your sexual maturity. So, uh, estrogen and progesterone, those are really, uh, balances that women need to look into. And if there's an imbalance, it could cause issues with your menstrual cycle with infertility. So these are some things you, you need to look at if you're in that stage or even beyond that, because yeah. if you have your hormones out of whack, you're going to come into perimenopause. Don't, and don't forget vaginal dryness as well, too. Yes. Yes. We're, we're joking around about this, you yeah. know, laughing about it, but the reality is true. 
Yeah. It like, can affect that. It can affect that. And then you, when you have menopause coming on, you know, you're less likely to want to have the desire to have sex too, because you're hot flashing, you don't feel sexy. So when you have your body in check and all your hormones level levels are normal and you're aging normally and you're eating well, you're moving well, your, your mind is right. Your body is, you know, in balance. That's when everything's going to function properly. Yeah. You know, when you mentioned about the diet and all that stuff, right. And the, the menopause it kind of reminds me of this article that uh, like a bunch of articles I read before where like, okay, the Western culture, their diet's different. And then the Japanese culture, they're like all into fresh food, you know, wholesome and, you know, lots of vegetables, right. A lot of that, they actually, the study shows that the Japanese diet or the Japanese women have less reported, um, menopausal or premenopausal pre symptoms compared to the Western culture. And they said that it's linked a lot of it to diet. So right. like going, tying back to Blenda's idea of, you know, having these nutritious, um, all these delicious food that actually tastes good, but it's actually good for your body as well too. So that helps with a lot of symptoms as, you know, we age, you know, like, especially for women, I mean, for men too, but like, you know, when it comes to sex, we want to prolong it as much as possible, right? Yeah. So Definitely. yeah, for sure. And then when you move more, it increases your circulation Yeah, or your sex organs are, you know, your, your levels are normal and you're more likely to have uh, a stronger want, desire for sex. Right. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else that you want to touch in terms of nutrition? So we can go to the mindset aspect of it. Um, I think that's it for nutrition. I really want to like touch base on really just Increasing your water intake, have having foods that are high in zinc, yep. high antioxidant foods, uh, nuts and seeds. Those are amazing. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, just make sure you're eating a wholesome, nutritious diet. Yeah. That is really important because like not only will it help you from in terms of the sex life, but it also helps you in vitality overall. Right. Okay. You'll have a better life. You know, like who wants to um, be tired all the time, right? Yeah, quality of life. Quality of life makes a big difference in terms of that, right? So yeah, in terms of like understanding the mindset, um, you know, like a lot of times people can say like um, <laughs> sex is just, oh, like the physical thing. Um, it's not necessarily true. There's more to it. I mean, you know, people get together because there's some kind of attraction going on, right? You know, one person likes the other person. And a lot of times it's that, you know, in order to help, you know, create a better environment where people are actually like are more open or more attracted to another. One thing is that I find that um, it's a factor is when you feel confident about yourself, right? For someone to feel confident about themselves, they actually are able to enjoy things more, right? So that helps with relaxing. You know, they feel better about themselves. You know, we talk about all these feel good. It's not just about feeling good. When your mindset is at a certain level, you feel like you can achieve anything, right? And compared to, let's say, if you have, if you know someone who's like tired all the time, sad all the time, depressed all the time, they don't want to do anything, right? So their libido is on the lower side. Whereas if you have someone who's confident, they're out there, they're exploring the world, they're doing things, right? The likelihood of them to be more aroused and, and you feel confident is higher compared to someone who's at a lower depressed state, right? So, and not only that too, how you view the other person, let's say you're, if we're talking about long-term relationship, how you view your partner as attractive, everybody has a different way of attractiveness, right? So let's say if you're, men and women think differently. So like, let's say for a man, you know, like he's visually like stimulated by a simple thing as, oh, I'm showing my skin. <laughs> <laughs> like, I no, no, not, not, that's not, I don't have cleavage, so I don't, I'm not going to be showing that and there's nothing to see anyways. Um, so certain things like that um, can cause easily, like, you know, for a man to be stimulated easily or aroused easily. Right. Whereas, you know, with women, I mean, that's why the beauty industry is so high, right? Because everybody's like uh, so focused on looking a certain way because, well, 
people are people we're visually you know being stimulated by this and from a women's perspective um it's different because she needs to feel good you know she needs to have this idea where oh he listens to me he's attentive right oh he cares about me right when they feel like they're understood they're heard and that they're significant she'll take her clothes off she'll blast her your clothes off before the man just because you make her feel good i don't know but like it's i think it's that's what it is like people have this thing where they you know, there's a saying where um, from a marketing or from a sales point of view, people will buy things from people who they know, like, and trust. So when it comes to a relationship, for that sex life to be magical or even better, you need to have those elements in place because, you know, when, when someone feels like they can trust you, they like you, and, you know, they know that you're, you're, you're in it for like the long run or together and that you both enjoy each other um that makes it more enjoyable <laughs> yeah yeah you you need to feel the desire and the love and all that in place right yeah definitely yeah you do and i i think like um in terms of you know okay this is one of the thing i think a lot of times there's a lot of movement i notice there's a big movement in terms of where you know there's a lot of men being more vulnerable or opening up to about their vulnerability and everything like that it's great because that's that's just showing authenticity and being open right and at the same time i notice that that it can go both ways there's this thing where you know like personally as a woman i think that we prefer men who are masculine more who are um capable who um are able to provide for us or who at least are accountable, right? Um, so a lot of times, I, I find sometimes that the younger generation are getting a little soft, and um, not not everybody likes people or men who are soft. So um, man up, men. That's <laughs> send us. <laughs> <laughs> laughing <laughs> really hard uh, this is my mindset perspective because look, the reality is this you know if shit hits the fan the women want to know that the man is able to take care of her right and if she can rely on him she's gonna have to do her own thing and what's you take care of about- herself man huh <laughs> take care of yourself that's what you learn no it's true but when it comes to, yeah you take care of yourself but when it comes to your relationship women finds it more i think you know in general because why why is there you know why why do young young beautiful girl go for the people who are like has you know lots of money the wealthy guy why does that still happen right is it is it because like she likes his sagging skin and um <laughs> I don't know, but like sometimes there could be an attraction. I know a like I have a friend of mine that really doesn't mind an older guy, which is yeah, fine, right? Sometimes there's like a 10 year difference, 20 year difference, you know, the the mindset, right? It's all mindset yeah. too. So, so she finds that mindset to be attractive, right? Yeah, that that's true. That's the mindset. So like, you know, like women don't want like I think like okay for me personally I don't want another like I don't want a guy like who's like oh okay I need to baby him because like look I already have kids do I need another baby no right you want to have a a man who is like capable who does things and who's reliable right so yeah you want a partner that is reliable that's like on par or similar has a similar mindset with you so that you, you respect right and let's say a, a woman to not respect a man, it's kind of hard for her to go and be like, hey, I'll have sex with you. You want to do it? I, I think that's, <laughs> it doesn't work like that, right? So actually, you know what it is? Everybody's sex life is different. Every couple's sex life is different. And 
you know, it's about clear communication, being able to say to your partner, like, hey, I'm hoping that I would have three times a week or four times or whatever it is, regardless, you know, however society makes it seem like. It makes it seem like everybody's having sex all the time, 24 seven. The reality is that is not true, okay? People have to work, eat, sleep, do other things as well too. So um, not true, okay? For those who are watching, do not have the um, pressure to feel like you have to have sex 24 seven, not true. Okay, so it's how it's how you and your um, partner pretty much communicate what works for both party and you know certain things. Oh, one other thing is that what will help spice it up a little bit is that there must be some kind of mystery in your relationship. So um, every now and then, go out and do something new, right? Like it doesn't have to be in the bedroom. It could be out, like, let's say you're going out to a new restaurant or go to visit somewhere else that's new, right? Because human, we get bored easily. I think generally people get bored easily and they get complacent. So when that happens, they'll feel like, oh, okay, well, that's just the routine, typical thing again, right? Where every now and then you spice it up, you, you do something new, you go to a new place, you learn something new, you do something different, you talk a little bit dirty to each other, you make fun of each other, you be, you're playful and you're being yourself here and there, that makes a big difference. And that itself makes you feel real and um, like you're playful again. So I think that really helps with your relationship and also with your sex life because it puts you at ease and your partner at ease. So I think that's what helps me. So yeah. Very well said. Okay. All right. Anyways. Okay. I hope some of the tips that Blenda gave you helped and then some of the other stuff that I'm saying helps. And um, yeah, enjoy. Have a great sex life. <laughs>